All this week, CBS News is focusing on the famine in Africa that has forced hundreds of thousands of people to leave their homes in Somalia and head south to the world's largest refugee camp in Dadaab, Kenya. Erica Hill is there once again this morning, and good morning to you, Erica. Hey, Rebecca, good morning to you. Just to give you a sense of how many people are coming into Dadaab each day, we arrived here on Sunday. Since that time, more than uh, 3,000, actually nearly 4,000 refugees have made their way to Dadaab seeking help, seeking shelter. And the need for help will only keep growing because we've learned that uh, when al-Shabaab retreated from Mogadishu over the weekend, a number of Somalis, we're told, actually saw that as an opportunity to get out. And we are told that they are now on their way here to Dadaab, which is only going to increase the need. Here's one of the issues. This camp, as you know, was built for 90,000 people. There are now more than 400,000, and it continues to push further and further beyond the, ex the uh, exterior of the camp, and it's pushing into the land of the local Kenyans who live here. And that is raising some serious questions about the future of Dadaab. In 20 years, a seemingly barren desert has been transformed. On its shifting sands now sits Kenya's third largest city, with a population of more than 400,000 and growing. A refugee city where nearly all are Somali on Kenyan land. They're fleeing war, they're fleeing famine, and they're literally coming here uh, because they have no choice. Dadaab's three camps were originally built to house 90,000 refugees. Now, two decades later, they are at nearly five times capacity and pushing further into the Kenyan desert. Local communities have shown a great deal of hospitality, but of course, hospitality has some limits as well. These homes are a perfect example. Originally part of a planned 15,000 home expansion for the refugee overflow, this UN project, which included schools, was stopped by the Kenyan government earlier this year, after just 116 homes had been built. When they see a house, a structure, a permanent structure, they think that this is something that will be here for a very long time. An idea that doesn't sit well with many local Kenyans, who also suffer in this drought, but don't see the same help as the refugees. This site started to be constructed about a year ago. While the plan to move refugees to this area is back on, construction is not. Tents will be added now instead of homes, in part due to the overwhelming need and the massive influx of refugees. But land issues aren't the only problem for Dadaab. This exploding population is straining the region's already limited resources, chief among them water. Is there going to be a time when this area can no longer support them? This is our gravest uh, concern. We think that we're very close to the point where the maximum population capacity of this area will be reached. Even as that reality looms, the UN has made it clear their mission is to help and no one will be turned away. So, Erica, this raises an interesting question then about the surrounding areas. What is the UN doing to help those people? Well, there are a number, of, a number of folks, even just outside the gates here at the U.N. compound is the town of Dadaab. A number of folks from Dadaab work here, work with the U.N. Uh, but also, any contract that is established here, 10 percent of those services need to be applied to the people of Dadaab. So an example of that for you, there are no hospitals in the village of Dadaab, but there are three hospitals within the three camps. And any local resident of Dadaab is welcome to go to those hospitals as well. So that's one way that they're trying uh, to share some of the services, Rebecca. Great stuff. Thank you, Erica. We appreciate your reporting.